Well, welcome to Pathfinder Church. I'm Dion, and I want to welcome you to this, this time of midweek reflection, looking at the stations of the cross. If you're not familiar with them, there are these, these ancient ways of, of journeying with Jesus through these different key points of his life from his sentencing to his actual death on the cross. And uh, we've got more stations of the cross than we do weeks in, uh, in Lent, but we're focusing on several of these uh, over the week. Actually, tonight there's just going to be one. But we're also learning how this journey of Jesus in a lot of ways reflects different moments in our own journey. So we're not only looking at the journey of Jesus, but we're, we're hearing stories of individual people's journey where, you know, in part, they, they reflect the, the walk of Jesus. Tonight you're going to hear from John Shepard, who is one of our student ministry directors. You're going to hear him share a little bit about um, this moment in Jesus's life and, and some moments in his life. We're also going to sing together and worship together. So I just invite you to take a moment right now get quiet, open up your heart, um, and prepare to meet God. Hi, I'm Rona, and this is Annalise, and we want to welcome you to our Lent midweek worship. We'd also like to invite you to make this midweek worship a part of your Lent spiritual practice this year. Now take these next couple of weeks, take 20 minutes, and set aside room to connect with God and to reflect on the journey of sacrifice that Jesus took for us. Thank you so much for joining us. Now let's sing. shall 
come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone. Faultless I stand before the throne. God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout. The universe displayed Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my soul And your works are marvelous, and your love for us is overwhelming. And we're sorry for all the times that we have taken for granted 
this life that you've given us. Lord, help us to remember that during our struggles and our doubts, even though we may not know what lies ahead, you do. And we know that it is all for good. And that is the hope that we need. Amen. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So that is what the soldiers did. Well, hello, uh, my name is John. I'm one of the student directors here uh, and I get the opportunity to share one more station of the cross as we continue this uh, Lent midweek journey. Uh, and this one's kind of an interesting one. Um, it maybe feels a little different. Uh, we, we've seen Jesus be in physical pain. We've seen him um, be helped and, and interact with other people. But here in this moment, he is stripped of his clothes. He is left naked and vulnerable in front of his community. I mean, this is a, a moment of um, deep hurt. Uh, there, there's lots of different clothing, you know, s patterns and, and, and styles and all sorts of things, depending on what culture you're in. But pretty much universally, if your culture strips you of your clothes publicly and push you out, that's a, that's, that's a pretty universal shaming measure. So this is not a good situation for Jesus. He is left, he's left vulnerable. And as I was thinking through my own life and trying to think through my own vulnerabilities, I started to realize I've been blessed to not have been very vulnerable. Um, I brought this piece of wood um, for my own safety, uh, for the things I'm about to say, um, because I have never gone a day in my life where I have not had food. Um, I have never had a serious medical diagnosis. Uh, my parents are both healthy and alive and together. Uh, and I, I have found a great community here and, and I've always been financially provided for. Uh, and even just my family itself, you know, I have them to fall back on. Um, so that's enough knocking on wood here. But uh, my life from kind of the outset was set up pretty well. Um, I, I've been educated. My family helped me get through college. I mean, I've had these, these moments. And I think as I got distance from being vulnerable. As a teenager, I started to realize like, oh, vul being vulnerable can be painful. When, when you're vulnerable, people can, can get you, people can, can attack you. Um, and so I doubled down. I started really building up these other layers of, of okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I don't lose things. I'm going to make sure that I'm the best at things. I'm going to work really hard so that I don't have to be in an uncomfortable place of vulnerability. And it, and it started to create this like negative uh, person, this person who would always had to win, who was super prideful, who was overly competitive. And I, I w remember just one day standing in the youth room at my church. Uh, I had a friend, we were, we were playing some game. I don't remember what it was, but we were playing some game. And she said to the public, uh, hey, don't, don't try too hard because you know John's going to have to beat you anyways. And like in that moment, all my armor just, it like fell off. Like I felt so exposed. I felt so vulnerable. All my, fr like it was just this, this secret thing that everyone actually knew that John was really full of himself and really prideful. Um, and it 
it really affected me. Um, it maybe sounds silly, but really the person I am today, all these years later, has, has been impacted by that very moment. Because I started to change. I started to realize, like, oh, this isn't good. I don't want to be seen as the guy who can't be vulnerable with other people. Um, these people that I like are not liking me because I'm trying not to be vulnerable. I'm putting on this armor. I'm putting these barriers in between us. Um, and I'm not willing to be a part of my community in a, in a natural sense. And so this all happens. And I start to recognize that there's this necessary vulnerability in community. And then I hit another section in my life, which is probably one of the most vulnerable times I have ever experienced, which was my move here to, to Pathfinder. I was 24, and in the span of a month, I got married, which was a huge vulnerable moment where you're interacting with this person and going deeper in relationship than you've ever been with anyone. You're moving in with someone. You're starting to share all these these things about your own life and your failures and your mistakes and, and your successes, and, and they're going back and forth, and this is um, happening. And then I am in this church that I, I, I wasn't really working well with, and I had some maybe some ministry philosophy issues, and so I was looking for a new job, and God provided. Uh, you know, I, I applied here, and, and it worked out, but now I'm moving from Florida, where I've grown up my entire life, to a new state halfway across the country. I'm leaving behind that family that gave me all the, that protection. I'm leaving behind the ease of family, both for me and my wife, our, both our families live in Florida, to a place where I don't have any friends, I don't have any family, I don't have uh, really anywhere to live, I gotta figure this out. Um, and all on top of that, I have to figure out how to be a husband which is really hard, by the way. Um, I, I'm still not very good at it. Uh, and so this, this moment um, was a moment where I had to decide, do I need to try to uh, be strong and like, you know, do what I did as a teenager and try to, to, to win and try to be the best on my own? Or was this an opportunity for me to, to be vulnerable and to reach out and to let people know that, hey, I'm not I'm not able to figure this all out. And it was actually really helpful um, that I walked into a situation where um, there's already another student director at the church that was working and she's better than me. So it was like, I already had, a, had, a, to, had to start learning and, and catching up. Um, and I made mistakes and I didn't understand the culture and I had to have awkward conversations with my boss um, who instead of throwing stones and instead of telling me how I wasn't good enough or I wasn't, going to make it, um, all these people started pouring grace on me and started helping me out and picking me up and saying, oh, thanks for letting us know. How can we be here and help you out? Um, and in the last five and a half years, uh, this experience being vulnerable has created some of the best relationships I've ever had. Uh, and so in this whole kind of thing, I, I've just become to be really thankful uh, for my own blessings and for the things that I've, I've gained, but I've also been really thankful for this identity I've been able to form in vulnerability, that I can just be open um, and know that my community is not, in Jesus' case, going to shame me and uh, you know kill me, um, but they're going to come around me and they're going to care for me and lift me up. And so I, I hope Today, as you're reflecting on this moment where Jesus gave himself over to vulnerability, that you think through the vulnerabilities in your own life, the ones that maybe were cast onto you that are not your fault. They just, they just happened. It was part of whatever life situation you found yourself in. And also the vulnerabilities that you did give yourself to, that you, when you opened yourself up to community, when you opened yourself up for a transparent relationship with other people, and you would know that in all of that, Jesus stands with you, that he understands your vulnerability. Thanks. As John was talking, I couldn't help but think about how awful that must have been for Jesus to be literally stripped naked. I mean, the indignity of, 
of that moment in his life. And of course, you're doing that to the most dignified being that ever walked the planet. And there's just something about that that seems so wrong. As John also talked, um, I couldn't help but think about just some questions that I'd put before you for your own reflection. And I just want to give you some time to really think about these things, to give answers to these things. Um, The first question is, have you ever been exposed? Maybe it's literally or figuratively. Have you ever had a moment when you've been publicly put forward, stripped of your protective clothing of your armor? Go ahead and think about that time. And my guess is as a result of that time, by the way, if you need to pause in between here to think longer, you can. But um, as you think about that time, my guess is that you probably learned from that moment, you probably learned how to put on armor, how to, how to keep that from ever happening again, because it's pretty awful, isn't it? So I want you to think about right now, what armor have you learned to wear? Is it always being right? Is it always being tough, not ever showing feelings or emotions? Is just the armor that you wear always being prepared? Maybe always appearing successful, put together? And even if you've never been publicly exposed or shamed in some way, my guess is you've figured out how to keep yourself covered and protected. So. I want you to think specifically about what, what does that look like for you? What is, what is the armor that you wear? And then finally, I want you to ponder this, and I know this is scary, but I want you to ponder for a second, what would happen, what would happen if you willingly took that armor off? What would happen if you opened yourself up? Instead of having someone else expose you, what what if you exposed yourself to vulnerability? Do you think there you could count on God to cover you? Do you think you could count on Jesus, this one who knows what it is to be exposed and, and, and to be ridiculed and to be shamed? Do you believe, do you trust in him enough to know that even in a place of exposure, nakedness, that do you count on him? Can you count on him to cover you? As John said, to be there with you? Can you count on Jesus to clothe you better than you can clothe yourself? And the scriptures, one of my favorite parables is the parable of a wedding banquet where, um, where the host of the banquet goes out and invites people in to come to the wedding banquet. And then the host looks around and sees people who are not wearing the proper wedding attire and gets kind of mad at them and throws them out of the wedding. Like, why aren't you dressed for the wedding? Shames them for not being dressed well enough. And that scripture always used to bother me until I came to understand that in those days, it was the responsibility of the host to provide the clothing for the wedding banquet. And so those people who came into the wedding underdressed weren't people who didn't have enough money to be dressed well enough. They were the people who refused the clothing that the host offered. See, I wonder, do you know that in whatever exposure you feel, whatever shame you fear, Jesus has offered to clothe you with a better clothing. And so by taking off your armor, by laying that stuff down, willingly doing that? Do you know and do you trust Jesus to cover you with something better? Uh, This can be a difficult way to live, living vulnerably. It's so much easier to live protected and armored, I know. But I think this is the way of Jesus. So uh, I wanna pray for us before we conclude tonight. Pray with me, please. Lord Jesus, Thank you for not only allowing yourself to be exposed, stripped naked, to suffer on our behalf, 
but thank you for showing us that, that when we're vulnerable, we're not fools. Although it can be painful and it can be scary, we're actually doing life your way. Jesus, um, give us the confidence and the courage right now to maybe lay down some, some armor, some protective clothing that we've been wearing for a long time. Give us the courage just to, just to willingly strip it away. And then Jesus, give us the promise that you want to clothe us with something better. You want to clothe us with relationship, with, with grace, with companionship, with your supernatural strength, with a, an opinion of us, a, an identity that is so much greater than anyone else's opinion of us. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for being exposed. Help us to be willing to expose ourselves so that then we can be clothed in something better, in your grace, in your very, in your very identity, that we might become more like you. This is a hard way to live, Jesus, but thanks for showing us the way. And tonight, um, just, just help us do that. We pray in your mighty name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm really glad that you were able to. May God bless you as you go to sleep or you go on to your day, whatever it is. May God bless you as you continue to walk the way of Jesus.